Well, I end up with 2 billion subscribers. Ooh, signs point to yes. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hi everyone, it's George the Antique Nomad, and I am just off Interstate 24 between Nashville and Chattanooga, Tennessee on the Manchester Highway 41 exit. And right off that exit is this place. I've driven by it a whole lot of times, seen the sign, never gotten to go before. So we are going now, and it looks like it's pretty busy actually. This is Madeline's. It is an antique mall. It's a big old metal building, but they've got a lot of really interesting stuff outside too. So we'll take a minute wandering that. A little bit uneven on the gravel here and flip-flops, but that's okay. We're just starting to get a nice sunny day. It's actually cool and refreshing for a Tennessee summer. I'll take it. So lots of planters and garden pieces, and a lot of this does look like it has age. I see hubcaps. Those fancy ones look like they might be off an old Chevy Impala, perhaps. Big green industrial lights, a porch swing. I love a porch swing. My grandfather always had one, so I have sentimental attachment. They've got advertising. They've even got Snow White. So I guess we will head on in and see what they have as far as little stuff, because it looks like it could be promising. 250 on the Lance store dispenser. Certainly a lot less expensive than a Coke machine. Don't go round hungry. I imagine a lot of the people who ate out of this ended up being pretty round and not hungry at all. You can see the difference in price on the Coke machine. Now that's a pretty elevated price. The one interesting thing though is that it came from an airport. These are Murano. They tend to lose their paper tags. I just put almost exactly the same bowl out for sale in my space at Vintage Modern St. Pete. They want $175 for theirs. I think I only put $135 on mine. So somebody should go get themselves a deal. A speedy weenie for speedy wieners. Obviously 1950s. And mixing coffee and chicory was something that was done more commonly then as well. Notice how the price has gone down to 300 on this. They're really neat looking. They're great for mall displays. They're great for home use. They usually all still work. That's why there's enough of them around that people don't really want to deal with the weight of them unless they have a specific place to put them, rather than just in a display. The Sunkiss Juicer at 15 is a good deal. I've gotten about 30 for the Juicer before, but it's a little worn on the paint. I'll bet it works, though. A bunch of Fisher Price. The Pelican is always one of my favorites. He's $38. The Jalopy. These are all partial wood and partial plastic, which has transitioned from the 50s into the 60s. Oh, and look, the Magic Answering 8-Ball in the original box. Now that is cool. Well, I end up with 2 billion subscribers. Ooh, signs point to yes. They're asking $20, and with the original box, that's absolutely fair. No zip code. Cincinnati to Ohio. So these came out in the early 60s. Because zip codes came out at the end of 1963. Interesting, they've got this carboy full of raisins or feed, but it does say it's a water dispenser. It's $2.95 for the whole outfit. Kind of a neat look. I haven't seen a metal bottomed one exactly like it before, and you could have put in something to mix with it, like for soda or flavoring, like they did with all the sodas in the old days. There is starting to be interest in Tilaki Paki pottery from the 40s and 50s. A lot of tourists brought it up to the United States when they went down to Mexico. It was crude and folksy and inexpensive. The walls are thin, so you have to make sure that it's in good shape. 
but they did eventually get the lead out of these glazes, so you can actually use them. Most people are just picking a few pieces out for display, though. Exxon chemicals work defensively. I think that there is an Air Force base not far from here. 50% off new merchandise. End of month sale, excluding arrowheads, crystals, rocks, and fossils. Okay, well, I'll bite at half off. I could be interested in something potentially. It's nice they put new stock in. Ooh, Department of Corrections for the Centennial Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. That could be a sleeper. I'd like to see that. There, of course, was that terrible incident at the Atlanta Olympics, and this actually connects to that in a strange, tangential way. I'll leave it to you to look up that story if you're interested. Now, usually I wouldn't want to pay as much as $9.50 for a lighter at half price, but this one's really clean. It's never actually had fluid. It's a cheaper Japanese one from the 50s, but they actually are not bad quality, and it's got a good graphic. So I think I'm going to take that in one of these. And I see we've got Army Police. Those look like reproductions to me. Paramedic PR. Puerto Rico? Hmm. That's interesting. It doesn't look terribly old, but for that price, I think it's worth getting. This municipal police, I am suspicious of that. That little head looks interesting in there. They have a whole side open so that we can just get in. So since there's people here who can see me and they can see I'm not taking stuff, I figure this is the time to do it. I feel a little odd reaching into a case, but it seems to be set up that way on purpose. Oh, and there's Ellie Mae Clampett from the Beverly Hillbillies. Ooh, and an interesting spider. Trapped in Lucite. I'll take that too. Royalty, $69. About 1920, I would say. There's a fun little bank. Modernist building. This bank will be from about 1970. Does not have a key. They usually don't. Banks held the keys in most cases. It's $9.50. I do have a lot of people who collect these kind of banks, and it's one I haven't seen, so I think I'll take it. Alright, well we've got 50% off in this space if it's got a red tag. So for example, the oak is half of $2.95, which is a pretty reasonable price. I can't make money on it at that price. I like the twig table. This looks like a nice old one that somebody made. Somebody turned this into a table lamp, and they're asking $125. And it's great that the old cord still works right. Oh, except it's not an old cord. This was put together recently. Because look how even though it's a cloth cord, it says Mexico. They were not made in Mexico. They were made in the USA back when something like this would have been made originally. So it is, in fact, something put together recently. You can get cloth cords for old lamps, though, which is nice if you want to be authentic about things. The Viking Epic candle holders are cute. A lot of people haven't seen these. Next to it, though, is this lovely bathing beauty lamp. They want $6.50, which to me is a very, very full price, but it does have its original spatter glass ball from Czechoslovakia for the top. And she is quite lovely. And more 50% out of their gear. Check out our new stuff, so we'll do that. For our fans down under, there's a nice cigar linen. It would be in the bottom of cigar boxes back in the 19 teens. Now, here's some stuff that I might like. This is Odd Fellows. I like these vestments. They did sell for me for a while. They've been slow lately, though. And at 29, I guess I'm going to have to leave that. Let's see what this one's from. This one's half of 59 with the star. Looks like another one of those in a little richer condition with a tassel. Fraternal organizations are declining in membership, but they are seeming to increase in terms of collectability. These are for printing bags, so you've got self raising flour, 
Pike yep. County Co-op. McComb, Mississippi, phone 1262. I wonder how much these are. These are interesting. This one has someone with, it looks like a tray of cookies. They seem to be made out of masonite. So that'd be 1940s or thereabout, I would think. It's a little indefinite what some of these things would do. You'd have to ink them and see how that ended up. Livestock and poultry feed. Safety first. These look like 1950s. Coca-Cola. Uh -huh. Well, that might be interesting to a Coke collector. And that's half of $29. I think I may get a couple of these just because they're curious and something that's, to me at least, unusual. Pretty simple. So, rising cornmeal. Miner's quality feeds. White satin. Hmm. Bird ground boiled cornmeal. It's interesting the way the faces have been turned. I'm sure, again, it's similar to a lino cut, the way that it would have laid down the ink on heavy paper. Castano la libertad. I'll have to figure out what that means. Acorn. Acorn's kind of neat. And Silver Leaf again. But you know what? I am sold on the Coca-Cola one. That is the one to buy, I think. For $14.50, and we'll see what somebody thinks of these. Okay, I cannot believe this is serious, but... 1987, the peak of the shoulder pad craze. And here we have Coca-Cola branded shoulder pads. I have done so many estate sales where I have thrown away drawers and drawers full of shoulder pads, but none of them said Coca-Cola. None of them came in this wonderful box. I never understood the idea of women padding up like football players, personally, but it was definitely a look. And they're clip-on, and half of 39 may seem like a lot, but these have to be unusual, and there are a lot of Coca-Cola collectors. I think I'm going to check these out. They might be worth buying. For most people, coffee is the journey's beginning. Maybe this is decaf. But it's by the Dryden Company. This era with this mark is out of Hot Springs, Arkansas. And they would put pretty much your name or any slogan you wanted on them. They're still in business in Hot Springs. They originated in Kansas, and when the interstates were going to pass them, they moved to Hot Springs because the tourists were there. Two dollars. It is neat to see the Regal China Old McDonald spice set. All six bottles. They are cute. He had a farm, and he had a horse, and he had a bunch of other stuff. This dealer has correctly identified it as a molcayete from Mexico. So it's a grinding stone. It's had some use. It doesn't have the pestle. It's only $32. It's a nice price. I've seen these incorrectly identified as Hawaiian for the poi pounders, for example, to be used. I've seen them misidentified as Native American, and they are always priced much higher when they have those misidentifications. So make sure, if you like this sort of thing, that you're either not paying a lot or that you do your research before you buy. All right, well, we got out of the sale booth and found some stuff, so let's see what this booth with a lot of pretty glass and fun kitchenware has to offer. Painted Fenton vase. I have to say, I've become a believer in these because they're really selling well. Dagenhart and Boyd and some other small glass making companies are making completely different things. So there's a lot of stuff that is legitimately collectible, but it was plentiful. So you'll see it around $12 on the little carnival deck. It's cute though. I imagine a lot of these glow under a black light. 
Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a quick break and thank you for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, please do subscribe because then you can click that bell to be notified of future videos. We have membership packages. There's a couple of different levels. We appreciate the support of our super fans who help us do extra bonus content. You can check that out by hitting the join button below or clicking the link in the description. And lastly, we want to ask you to check out our new channel, The Antique Nomad Live, that's live with an exclamation point, where we're doing additional content of a live nature, haul sales, bonus stuff. We'll have a lot of fun there too. So check us out here on The Antique Nomad and also on The Antique Nomad Live. Now let's get back to this video. This is where someone has taken a 1930s floor lamp with a Greek key design and a nice alabaster base that probably lit at one time. And then they decided they wanted something that looked like a Victorian piano lamp. So they had their husband buy parts from the lamp store and bought some reproduction globes and put together their lamp. It's cute. I don't think it's $275 cute though because it really is a marriage and it's probably from 1970. Here's Silver Leaf by Libby Glass. A lot of people see the gold more often. The juices are only $3, but it's such a small size. We consume more nowadays. We'll just put it that way. $45 for the set of those. This Kitchen Queen, which was repainted but done well, is on layaway. I'm very curious what they got for Oh, this is a Hoosier, but this is a late Hoosier. Look at the tag. This is actually a recent production. That's why the painting looks so fresh. They did do some of these later in time. Another good way to tell that is by how thin the stamping is there. Well, these are all $5 a pair. Some of these older match sets are interesting to me. I look for the ones that I can identify as treasure craft. Other companies quickly followed. This one has to do with celebrating General Douglas MacArthur with his hat and his pipe shortly before he was fired by Harry Truman. I think because of the interest in that story, I'm going to get these. I see that they've lowered the price on the Coors plastic hanging lamp from the 70s to $75. And at $75, <clears throat> that's a pretty good buy for someone who wanted it in their house. Okay, Avon bottles. Let's talk about them for just a minute. They're really well made. They were made by Wheaton Glass Company in New Jersey. They were made to be collected when new. There's still a ton of them around because of it. That's why they don't sell, and that's why they're 50% off, so they're around $5 each, and they may not sell for that. The fish wall pockets are cute. And I like the old phone sign. This is from the 1960s. $75 may not be a bad price. It could be from one of those very modern sort of egg-shaped phone booths, in which case having that to make the phone booth worth a bunch of money would be important. Okay, there's the biggest low mold Santa I've seen. And he's older, he's got natural fading and a little bit of wear. He's priced at $2.99. This one's had a little bit of restoration, but lamps like these used to hang in general stores in the old days because they gave about as much light as anything at that time. You can see that it was kerosene and it had a rather large tank because they needed it to go for a while. They didn't have time to turn around and keep filling it and filling it. Here's some pretty carnival glass and these are mainly older pieces. The Fenton with the grape and cable. Fairly obvious why it's called that. You can see the cables running between the grapes around the outside of the pattern. Most of these patterns are named for what they are. This one is blue chrysanthemum. The ships in the distance are interesting. It's to, it's to be emblematic of trade with Japan. 
which had opened up not too long before this bowl was made, maybe 20 years before. And chrysanthemums were the national flower of Japan, still are. You can see the chrysanthemum shown as the emblem on the stamps that are made in Japan for postage. Northwood did the fruit and flowers, and also the strawberries. Fountain holly is a pattern we see fairly frequently, and the thistle pattern as well. There's the fruit, and then this one is peacock and grape, a fountain pattern that's a little more desirable because of the peacocks in it. Dugan is another maker. There are a lot of companies that make carnival glass. Here's another Dugan piece with the wildflowers. But the one that I think has the best color overall is this one because you can really see the blue to purple tones in it. And this is Northwood's version of Blue Peacock. Peacock on the fence. You just can't decide. Some pretty majolica. I always enjoy the ones with the fans. That's an aesthetic period designed from about 1870s to 80s. This one is by a company called Holdcroft, and it is stated to be rather scarce. They are asking $600 for it. I did know someone who had a shop that specialized in majolica, and I can't say I've seen it before. Here's an early form of a check protector. It's a lot smaller than the later ones. This is going to date to maybe 1910 or so. These appear to be American-made. Collectors do prefer the American-made over the offshore. And you'll see prices anywhere from about $35 to $75 on these. People really do love the die cast. I have a friend who collects the race car versions. They are mainly offshore production. And then there's a bunch of briar up here, including a few you don't see so often, the bighorn ram. The pronghorn is not as common either. Bull moose has always been a little more expensive, and the longhorn steer as well. After the moo cow creamer went through its first phase of popularity and it started to wane, they kept it going for a while by putting smiley face on it. So. The cow isn't necessarily smiling because it's spitting milk onto your cereal, but the smiley face is happy. $7.50 may not be a bad price for this nowadays. I haven't had one in a long time. Fiesta came in this rose color in the 1950s, and I still look at serving pieces because they sell. Oh, and they only have $10 on it because they think it's a new color. That's great. It really does pay to know your Fiesta colors. This should probably still these days sell for $30 or $35, and I'm happy to get it. Unless that's a chip. Please don't be a chip. Oh good, it's just schmutz. We're always happy. Now when it's something we really don't want to buy, then we say, please have a chip, please have a chip. Another thing that you can make money on, because they're small and easy to ship if you're selling online, are some of these little Shawnee planters, and it does pay to know what they are, because Shawnee at first did not put this very bold clear mark on all of their stuff. So you will see them out there with no marks, and they can often go for a couple of dollars. These are priced about 20 which is full retail. It's not exactly a crazy lamp, but this one is Capo de Monte. It's 1960s era, so it's got the nice dolphin-footed base. Might even be late 50s, but the colors are definitely more avocado-y, like 60s. And the detail is not as good in the faces as some of the earlier or more expensive pieces. Still, for $75, it's priced fairly well. This piece is often mistaken for Blanco, but this is Rainbow Glass, the hand-blown glass subsidiary of Viking. It's got a crackled base. You see these in contrasting colors. They're not always clear and amber. And it's got the nice label on it to help you know, which oftentimes is washed off, so another good thing to know about. Now they're asking a hundred. This place is set up more like a kitchen. We've got a possum belly cabinet, belly cabinet, 
flower cabinet, whatever you call these. A nice bin from the 1800s, it says. This is really cool. This is a foot-powered churn, and you could have churned butter in it, and some people even would wash their laundry and something like that. And then we've got the butcher block. Butcher block tables, especially old, crusty, used ones, are really hot in decorating right now. Especially real ones, because it goes with farmhouse look, but it is true primitive. I'm curious to see if we can find a price on this, because they are selling for four to six hundred dollars in the places that I'm seeing them. And I cleared things aside just a little bit so you can see this is indeed one big round of wood. It's definitely a great look. And then next to it is something really cool. This is a white frost refrigerator. This would have been a metal version of the icebox right before we get electricity and refrigerators that are done in the modern way. It's priced at $9.75. You almost never see them. Almost all of them got scrapped during the Second World War because they were obsolete and they were good metal and they needed metal for the war effort. This one says that it dates originally from 1906 and there is where you put your food. And the great part was the ice went in the container above so that the cold went down into the food instead of having the cold below it like most ice boxes. It's also a little easier to pour the ice in, I suppose. Interestingly enough, because of the design with this on top, when GE came out with the monitor top refrigerator, that was part of the reason they put the engine on top, because they figured that people were used to not using that part of the refrigerator and bending down for the food. A bulk milk cooler, I'm sure that was a very useful thing to farmers back when this ESCO sign was made. Looks like it would be 1930s approximately. Maybe 40s, it's priced at 125. That's definitely an unusual one. A lot of this stuff is clearly out of an old feed store and it's great to see so many of those places are long gone. So to be able to enjoy a bunch of this type of thing in one place is pretty neat. Across we have some advertising. Now here's an older Coke machine. It's shorter, and people are liking these because the people who collect this stuff, it takes a lot of room. I know a guy who had to pour concrete floors through his house because he collected monitor top refrigerators, amongst other things. Works and Cools, Coke Machine, 925. Well, this guy's on layaway. This is another forge part for a blacksmithing outfit. The old railroad crossing sign. Now we're seeing the fairly new ones with the decal applied lettering for about 75 to 100 and a quarter. This one's 800, but there's a reason. It's because it has all the marbles in it. See the old cat eye signs like this. They are selling for big money now. We give plaid stamps because green ones are boring. Well, Madeline's turned out to be bigger and more interesting than I expected, so come join me on my next video and we will show you the other half of the store because there's still a lot more to see. In the meantime, I'm George the Antique Nomad at the social media you see below. Have fun and find something great and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.